Hello there friends! All this week we've been waiting for the release of the update. We wanted a huge operation, a lot of content, and someone even hoped for the anti-cheat. But what we get in the end? <laughs> LMAO! Well, this and also the rest of the most interesting news from the last week is in today's episode. So my bros, without further ado, let's get straight to it. First, in general, let's talk about why people were such hyped about the new upcoming operation. Like, firstly, did Valve promise something? Were there any hints? Well, overall there were a couple of baits, but rather not from the developers, but from data miners. All as one found a lot of lines of code that kind of hinted at the operation. There was a lot of information about keychains, new maps, new modes, new case, new skins, and even the new knife. But the main reason for the hype and expectations was some kind of a prank from CS2 publishers in China. As you know, there they have almost another game because of different restrictions and censorship. So the dudes from China who are responsible for CS2 promised a lot of activities connected to the game's 25th anniversary, and there appeared to be a battle pass for the new operation. So people thought like, if this is written by the publishers themselves, although from China, then clearly something was going on. At least we all thought so. Every day, every night last week we sat in anticipation and refreshed the game page, but on the 25th anniversary of CS, the exact day, Valve just rolled out a post on Twitter, and that's it. Such a huge date, we would have liked to celebrate that with a bang, but we only got a twit, and that's all. In the end, a whole week passed, and finally we get a big update, 5 gigabytes, it came out. But as you know, there was no operation. They brought a new format of MVP, okay, that's something, and also added 5 new maps, and they didn't even bother to update them before publishing, they released the old versions with bugs. And only after some time the developers realized that they posted the old maps and decided to update them afterwards. Even no loading screens photos. And that's it. They added also new settings in the menu and really, that's it. Valve just trolled everyone once again. Morale here? Don't set your expectations high anytime with Valve. By the way, JL has been angry at the developers, but he did it with respect. Like, he still hasn't even been given a medal for winning the major, you know? Anyways, I have to admit that I really like this Pool Day map, which is a reference to CS 1.6 map, which is a remake and all that. I, like, get huge nostalgic vibes from it, and it's really fun to play because it's like close quarters and it's just like chaos and all that. It's honestly a great way to warm up before the matches. And it also has a reference to CS 1.6, by the way. And yeah, bros, I forgot about the most important thing. Actually, not forgot, but just saved it for the last. They also finally fixed the ranks in matchmaking. Soon a year will pass since the release of the game, but we're only now getting the first ever global elites. So no more 10 wins for calibration on each map, it has been reworked, Valve reduced the calibration to 2 matches, fixed the ranks a little and now it all seems fine. Don't forget to share your ranks in the comments below. Maybe someone in the comments is already the global elite, but not me, not yet, not like ever. Anyways, let's get to the fun part here. Apparently Navi taught JL some lessons after he flamed the developers, even with respect, because Loba noticed that the Major's MVP deleted his tweet and asked how much he was fined, and well, didn't get the answer. The funny and scary thing here is that Valve just tilted after all this leaks about the operation, like they didn't promise anything to anyone, they didn't announce anything, they released a big update and all they get from above is hate. 
because apparently the community thought there is gonna be more. And you know what? Valve ended up even banning data miners on Twitter. They unfollowed them and put them into the blacklist. And if you think about it that way, it's kinda true and logical because nobody promised us anything. We made up for ourselves that there will be a huge update with anti-cheat with a lot of content, that it will be like almost CS3 or something. So I guess, yeah, no high expectations anymore, please, even with all these leaks. And Gabe followers said it as well, like nobody promised us anything, just all these findings from data miners somehow click with each other in a fantastic way. Add to that the context and the 25th anniversary of the game, a cool date and all that. It just looked like we're gonna get something, but after such a big enough update with the maps that we got, even if you don't like it, we should hardly expect anything serious in the next three months. And Overdrive also says that no one will release something big in the summer, because the online is too small, like people are touching grass and all that. So in general, what we get? A few new maps, updated ranks in matchmaking and this new MVP thing, and a couple of tweaks in settings. And yeah, by the way, Valve took pity on the data miners and unbanned them after a wave of heat. Oh merciful Gabe. Well, my friends, what do you think about the update? Like, were we scammed? Write in the comments below your opinions, because it's always interesting to read. Here is, for example, what Maui Snake said. Mills is meh. Too many isolated pathways, feels like 1v1, v1, v1, etc. But Thera has real potential, maybe too many important subterranean moments, but mid feels so cool. Also, B is such a uniquely designed site, would already replace Vertigo with it. And you know what, bros, I kinda agree with him with almost all of that. Thera feels just too good, I liked it both gameplay-wise and it's just super stylish. But I wouldn't change Vertigo because I like it. But maybe Mirage one day? Anyways, now let's discuss the most important news from the pro scene of this week. A couple of big decisions happened. For example, Liquid removed their coach, Zeus. It's just like the insiders said. And also Skulls is rumored to be taken to Furia soon, which we discussed in the previous episode. So basically, it's not a good situation for Team Liquid, because only three players are left. No coach, no sniper, and no captain. And by the way, the first talks have already started about the op player. According to Richard Lewis, Liquid are interested in Wrinkle, and they are willing to pay a lot for him. He showed himself well in the last tournament, and there are already talks that he is a new simple. However, Ninjas in Pyjamas immediately denied it all, said that Wrinkle is not for sale, and the player himself doesn't really want or plan to leave the team. Bros, if you wanna see a separate video about Wrinkle and his story and how he plays, let me know in the comments below and use your likes to vote. Apparently, there are not so many good ops on the market right now, and Liquid will presumably have to spend a lot to get one. Only like Simple and Nikodos are available, and there's also Nitro. This is the second time Captain America is returning from Valorant to CS. If before it was just a rumor, now he has announced it himself. Officially, he said that Valorant after his return didn't come to him at all, and CS feels like home. Like, especially since there are no captains in the American region, wouldn't be surprised if he goes to Liquid again this time. However, as Dust2 reports, it's very unlikely. Nitro initially wanted to move to M80 CS2 squad after Malbs left them heading towards somewhere in G2, but something didn't work out. No complexity as well, they're doing pretty well with JT at the moment. Liquid are still exploring other options on the market, and Nitro is clearly not at the top of the list, so in the end, only energy is left. They've got a pretty good lineup there, like Breezy, Automatic, OC. Maybe if they get a good captain, something will happen and they will thrive. We just have to wait for the official announcement. Bros, Nitro is the main shapeshifter of the pro scene. There have been also a few other transitions that have already happened. For example, Ladislav Guardian Kovac made a splash and returned to the pro scene, though not as a player, but as a coach for BS game. And they already have three whole players, Kakanito, Joel and Honor Kaz. That's basically the end of the official reshuffles. Well, almost. Amkal removed Icy from the squad and benched him, and there's a whole drama around that. 
Surprisingly, they throw a good sniper to the reserves. Clearly, it wasn't about the game. It turned out that he was tested at Cloud9 and didn't really talk about this with his org. There were a lot of rumors that he was playing Prax with Boomich and Exile. That was until a few weeks ago and now, relatively recently, the rumors have started again. But this time it came down to a kick. Mkal wrote that they're removing their sniper because of bad behavior towards the club. And Overdrive confirms that Icy was tested for Cloud9. So apparently Amkal banned him from playing Prax with Clouds and he went anyways. And as a result he got instant punishment. And that's not all. According to Overdrive he can't move to a new team either. Icy не знаю куда уходит. Мне сказали, что Icy не может уйти в Cloud9. Потому что там какая-то такая штука, что если он ходит в Cloud9... Его могут и есики Cloud9 могут есики забанить там на нарушение каких-то прав. So basically ESIC is getting involved because of some bad negotiations between teams and the player. I don't remember anything like that in the pro scene if this is true, except that the clouds themselves naturally deny it. Their manager rolled out a huge post where he said that he just laughs at all this news and it's not true. They test players strictly by agreements. And the fact that half of the rumors just appear because of the game on Face It is nonsense, because Boomich and Exile can play with whoever they want. By the way, Exile posted their new lineup. It's him, Boomich, Sweetie Pots the manager, and Groove the coach. I mean, it's clearly a joke, but for me it seems a little desperate, doesn't it? Like, Cloud9 at the moment would agree on almost anyone with level 6 or higher, simply because no one wants to join the team. And I am personally a little offended, because a tier 1 squad, one of the best teams in the world on paper, is now just a tier 2 stack, if not tier 3. They don't even play or have a roster to prac, but anyways, we will see where it takes them. And since we're talking about Cloud9, their former player Perfecto has piled up a lot of content. Firstly, he gave an interview to HLTV where he said that they left Cloud9 not together with Hobbit and it just happened to be at the same time. Like, each of them separately decided to leave the sinking ship and it happened at about the same moment, just coincidentally. Perfecto also added that he's fine with going international, so bros, are we waiting for him to take Hooksy's place in G2? And he also had a conflict with Loba for some reason. Recently, Perfecto and his girlfriend played at the Onkare Cup, you know, a media tournament for some pro players, streamers and bloggers, nothing interesting to be honest. And during one of the matches, Perfecto's stats were worse than his girlfriend's. And Loba couldn't pass it up. Proof of the randomness and lack of skill in CS2 is that an experienced major winner, pro player who is being paid huge amounts of money can be outfragged by his girlfriend who casually plays the game on stream from time to time without any actual practice. Valve devs, remember, you won't get some for making the game more noob friendly for the girls. To which Perfecto replied, What are you talking about Loba? It's just a show match, Mr. Jock. But you're right, it's like shit when you can be a top fragger in the FPL. It's really weird. But it turns out that Loba didn't mean to offend Perfecto, he's just flaming CS2 again. I agree with you, when a player who barely plays CS2 can be a top fragger in FPL tells you how noob friendly the game is, how unskilled and randomized it is. Thanks for confirming and agreeing with me, I'd appreciate if there were more professionals who recognize how shitty the game is. In general it turned out to be a conflict out of nothing, and it died as fast, but as some people write in the comments Perfecto just destroyed Loba, so he had to retreat. I'm not sure if that's that, but let it be, okay. And speaking of internet drama, Simple is at it again, Media Wars. Now this is much more familiar. First of all, he's moving on to Dota, his return to CS2 seems to be cancelled. I mean, Simple? He's just great. He chills, he lives his life to the max, he flexes with cars, and in general spends his holidays as good as possible. I mean, good for him. Meanwhile, in the comments below, my bros, you can tell me what Simple should do in the next season. I mean, he can move to Falcons again, or maybe try Team Liquid, or wait for Navi to de-restructure again, or anything else. 
and I guess only time will tell. And lastly, a little bit of rumors, but what rumors? Remember the insider KRL? He leaked a lot of information and now he decided to stir up the market a little bit again. So according to him, Falcons are going to completely rebuild the squad and are calling for Monacy and Nico again. The Sheiks want them in place of Snappy and Sanpayas, while Dupree will become the captain. Sounds amazing, of course, and the money is just unreal. According to rumors, Nico's salary was supposed to be $85,000 a month, almost like Zaibu's. But apparently Nicola turned it down for the second time in a row, and the Sheiks were left without Nico, and supposedly without Monacy, because he won't go anywhere without Nico. But that's nothing new. So my bros, that's basically it about the interesting news for this week. I can only add that eSports Awards started nominating stuff for their annual ceremony, and here's what we have. First, Golas nominated among best streamers. I mean, I love Golas, but he has no chance against Kai. And James Banks was among the finalists for eSports Personality of the Year, and I love James, he's cool. While Pimp and Maniac can win the eSports Analyst of the Year award. Fully deserved, great guys. And as you can guess, Donk can become the breakthrough of the year, while Counter-Strike 2 was overall nominated as the eSports game of the year. Bros, I'd honestly love to release videos as often as possible, but there's basically no news at all. This is all in a week's time, I've been scraping it all together. So far all the players are chilling, flying around different countries, for example James in Japan, Deco gets married somewhere, Fear and Monacy are on holiday together playing football and all that. In general, everyone is not in CS. I think by the beginning of July, everyone will be back and there will be transfers. The new season starts already in three weeks, so it's time to gather your best squads. Right, Cloud9? And in the end, a little bit about how smart could be CS players. As you know, a lot of people are playing the closed beta of the new game from Valve called Deadlock. Well, it's too raw and it's hard to get access and the developers, when you start the game, say please do not bring any information about this game in the media and don't share your impressions, only on a closed forum. But of course, the CS2 players distinguished themselves. Both NPL from B8 and Samda Young from ANS just went to play and posted about that. And SDY even wrote a whole review on the game in an extended format. I mean, bro, why? Why can't you just give some respect to developers? I can imagine SDY's face when Valve meet him at some major of some sort and sue him for licks. Anyways, bros, it's finally over. By the way, if you would like to watch not only news videos, but also various historical or entertaining releases, write in the comments below and vote with your likes. Don't forget to hit the like button on the video, don't forget to follow and comment with whatever you like. I'm not saying goodbye for a long time, see you soon.